Hey, welcome to a new Project Camp update. So we bought this big piece of land and are prototyping a more sustainable way of living. Not sure how it's gonna go, but let's see. And this video is number 38, and every eight video we talk about our current problems, or challenges as we like to call them. Uh, so in this video first we're gonna do that. I'm gonna talk about the problems we currently have. Then I'm gonna share you an offer for someone to come here and help out and receive 10,000 euro, which is kind of exciting. And finally, I'm going to sit down with Rita to do a Q&A. So we're going to answer questions you guys posted in the previous video. A lot to do, so get started. So let me first recap on our previous challenges. Uh, first one was flies. There were just a lot of flies flying around and they're in your ear, your head. Fucking flies. Do you like them? Oh, yeah. I love them so much. Can you hear how much I love them? It's just very annoying. Uh, it continued to be like that for a while. Now it's actually getting less. And according to the neighbors, it's actually these two periods in the year. You have them a lot in the spring and in the autumn. So hopefully we're good now for a while. And the second challenge we had was video making, that it's kind of hard to integrate this into our workflow here. And that problem actually became a bit bigger. So let me explain. So with video making, we mean making these weekly update videos for you guys, where we document the things we learned or did, put it in the video, and then you guys can watch it. And it's actually a really nice process because it allows us to share the things we learn or the mistakes we made. Uh, it's a fun way for ourselves to keep track of all the things we do. It's a bit like a diary. And it also generates income from the uh, revenue from YouTube, which has been super nice actually. So you watching these videos helps the projects a lot. So it's a very good thing for the project to have these videos. So the problem is we won't be able to keep it up like this because a few reasons. First is uh, one week is short. Uh, to do and something meaningful and film and edit that in the same week, it's intense. Second, now we're just with two people here, so it's kind of easy to have an overview of all the things that are going on. But the more people come, uh, the more chaotic it's going to be and the more complex to manage it all and plan everything. And third, I'm currently the one making the videos and editing them and it just takes a lot of my time. And in the end, the goal of the project is to find a way how to live sustainable and video making is sort of a secondary thing. So I'd rather focus my time on the long-term goal and the mission of the project instead of making videos. And doing both at the same time is just gonna slow down our progress. So I'd rather focus on the long-term mission. So yeah, in a way, video making like this is uh, unsustainable because we're not able to keep it up. But we did come up with a plan on how to move forward with this. Let me show you. So in order to understand our plan forward, you kinda need to know a little bit where we're at. So a brief recap. Uh, about one year ago we came to this land. Here are the first update video of Project Camp on the land. And the land had nothing, so we decided to set up a base camp with basic infrastructure. So we have some water, electricity, shelter, basically a place where we can stay. And besides uh, setting up the base camp, also understanding a bit where we are. Uh, what are resources available uh, around here, how are the neighbors, what's the land even like, what's the difference in autumn and spring. And it's been great, we learned a lot, uh, and now it's time to move forward to the next phase. And we needed to find a little bit of a structure on how to continue this development. Is it always ongoing? Is it in versions like fresh plastic? So we decided to work in seasons. So what this means is basically we work from March, April until November. And then we do a lot of work and then we take time in winter to reflect and take a break and plan the next phase. The next season. So now season one is almost finished. We have a few more things to do to set up this base camp. It's uh, making a few roofs that protect us for the rain in the winter, but then uh, it should all be good. So the plan is then also to really stop making videos. To say we take a break, we reflect and we plan what's coming next. And season two would then start again in April. <clears throat> and the nice thing is that it's actually a bit aligned with the real seasons. So in spring, summer, you have more energy, you do a lot of things. In autumn you start to wrap up, and in winter you take time to reflect and recharge. So it seems like a pretty good long-term way to develop this project. And this is actually kind of scary to stop making these videos, because, uh, well, first, YouTube really likes uh, reoccurring videos. So make them every week or every day even, 
uh, because that's what the algorithm likes. So the moment you do that, it spreads it around more. So not doing that or breaking that pattern, it's kind of risky. And the second one is you guys might actually just forget. Maybe now it's in your pattern, um, but if we quit for a few months, we're not sure if you guys are still there. So this would actually be a good moment to go to that subscribe button, like down below and add the little bell to it. So you get a notification when a new video comes up. So we have a few more videos now to finish up season one, but the next season, season two, would start the 14th of April. So make sure to mark that in your calendar somewhere, because if we all watch that video, we're back into this algorithm thing. So you might wonder, where is season two about? What's gonna happen? To be honest, I don't know yet, uh, because we're gonna plan that this winter. But what we do know uh, is that making video is gonna be an essential thing for it. Okay, so we need a video maker, which could be you or your friend, uh, but we basically need one person to be here to make the videos for season two, which means you need to be here from March until uh, November to capture all the things and produce one video each week and upload it to YouTube. And that will be your main task, to take care of that. In exchange, we can give you a place to sleep, we cover your food expenses, so you don't have any cost on that, and we can give you 10,000 euro for the whole period of time. You can find more information on the website, support.projectcamp.com, but we do need to uh, be convinced that you can do the task uh, by sharing some older videos you made or a portfolio, because it is quite a complex thing to do, to upload a video each week, but also be in this setting where it's kind of rough, uh, not super stable, it's not like we have a super nice office here where you can edit your video. So uh, it's quite an adventure and a challenge. I hope we find someone. It would also be good for you guys on YouTube because it would increase the quality. So make sure to spread it around to your friends or video makers that you know. And maybe I'll see one of you guys here for season two. Time for a Q&A to answer uh, some questions you guys have. Scared? <laughs> I guess. From Jintung K. Penny. Why are you not posting regular videos or at least three or four videos in a week? We really love to watch your videos so we want to get a bit more frequent. Yeah, Jintung K. Penny, I would say uh, come here and make the videos. Question from Vivo Forto. How often do you use the pizza oven? Uh, not often enough. But uh, maybe in the coming future it will be easier as there is something coming up to protect the pizza oven. So you can have pizza for breakfast. And for lunch. Uh, question from Diana Marie. Are you intending on having merchandise? Might I suggest you offering chunks of rope and roof tiles? People buy anything. That's a good suggestion. I would be curious who would take the broken roof tiles from the land. Um, Let us know your address and we'll ship you one. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Central Portugal seems to be a bit of a hotspot of similar eco homesteading projects on YouTube. What about getting together with collaboration and skill swap? Yeah, it sounds like a cool plan. Uh, up until now, actually, we didn't really do much uh, in general. We didn't really go out of the land much. And if we did, we met with the neighbors or some local uh, people. So uh, yeah, maybe we'll do that in the future uh, once we have a bit more time on our hands. Question from Lars Eriksson. In the last video, everyone was there. Where did they all go? Who stays on the land regularly? And what's the cadence of visits from your team? What is cadence? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, last video there was a few people, or the late videos, there was the few people on the land. Most of the people we knew already and people that came to help out with specific tasks, actually, that you saw also on the videos. At the moment is just the two of us, back to us, and Adrian and Julian. Julie, Stefan G, do you still want to update the Project Camp Academy website regularly? Certainly. I would say that's also the backbone of this whole project. But I think we did notice that we need a bit of more time to really make sure the knowledge we gather is accurate and complete enough. So it will probably take a bit longer before it really ends up in the Academy but 100% sure that is coming. Uh, do you have an actual roadmap with milestones you would like to achieve in the forthcoming one to two years? At the moment, not really. Like I mentioned before in the video, we're gonna take the winter to make this uh, roadmap and planning. So 14th of April, you would know.
You have fresh water from the well, where does the wastewater go? Yeah, the wastewater so far doesn't have a very perfect system, everything goes back to the land, but as we also use everything biodegradable, it's not a big problem so far. To be improved. Michael, when are you getting your electricity tools review? Uh, not sure, still on the list to do, but I feel like I just want to use them a lot before I make a review. Um, but if you guys want to see it, let me know, then I can put some urgency to it. With the amount of different ground levels in the land, are you considering building a pumped hydroelectric storage facility as a big battery? Not yet. Not yet. Question from Gabriel Sang. Tell us more about your relationship between you, even if it's just the basics. We are in a relationship. That's the basic. We work together. <laughs> Melikoy, do you have any profit generating operations on your property? Funny, actually a lot of neighbors always ask this. How do you make money from your land? Whether to put on eucalyptus or to grow crops? I would say we don't really know. We also not really intended to make money from the land. I think we're going to find some sort of a weird business model between making money from YouTube, Patreon, donations, people volunteering but it's all still very abstract at this moment. Any plans on building a rainwater catchment storage structure on the land? Uh, so far not very specific plans. For sure it will be highly needed in the coming future and that will be also a basic part of the ecological design. Question from Jordan. Do you plan to get livestock soon? Like goats and sheep? Mm, no, not for now. For now what we have is just neighbors, shepherds that bring their goats and their sheep to our land. Eating bushes. Yeah. If you, if you were to start over again, is there anything different you would have done? Things like location, layout of the land or natural resources? Uh, hard to say really because I think you learn from all the things you do. Looking back, I prefer to have a land without highway sounds, I would say. Um, some things we thought would be more important, for instance, when we were looking for land, we were looking for land close to the grid, so we could hook up electricity for running machines. Now we kind of skipped that step and went straight to solar, which is pretty doable. Uh, so that could have been actually easier when we looked for land, if it didn't need to be close to the grid. But overall, I would say all good lessons learned, so wouldn't really redo it. Question from Vivo Forto, what's up with the noise of the highway? Yeah. Still there? Still there. Still there. Mm. Frederico Neto, do you guys plan on keeping the precious plastic mission? Uh, Project Camp seems so far from urban plastic, seems weird uh, to import plastic into the countryside. Yeah, I agree, it's kind of weird to see uh, plastic in this setting. Uh, however, we did find a few applications where it would be super nice to actually have recycled plastic. For instance, in tubes uh, for the drainage from the water, they're now always new PVC. Uh, you could use recycled plastic for that. We're going to do a tryout with the roof tile from recycled plastic. Uh, so we tried to find a few applications where it could be useful. But in general, I would say they're pretty separated. Indeed, it's more of an urban city setting, the recycling. And here it's more of a natural organic setting. China Sessier. Have you already chosen a wood chipper, like your friends suggested? No, not yet. We really want to get one. Uh, the thing is that there are a few things to decide and you can decide to hook a wood chipper on a tractor. And for that we also need to decide that we want to have a tractor. Or you can decide to have a more a wood chipper with uh, its own um, engine. Uh, lots of questions around the wood chipper still. Let us know if you have any suggestions. It's always inspiring to see the ease you have to meet new people in places. How do you reach them? How is it to film everything, people you just met? Yeah, it's Rita. She is good with people. <laughs> it's not just Rita. <laughs> it's Rita. Jonas Lima, what you guys are planning about receiving people in the future? I mean, I love the project and would love to help out or swing by when I'm in Portugal. Uh, no, we are not open for visits yet. Uh, if you want to help out in the future next season, you can see support.projectcamp.com. 
and in there we have specific tasks where you can check and see if you have the skills and the joy to sign up. Question from Maxwell Gold. Is Rita your secret weapon when it comes to befriending all these fantastic local people? <laughs> yes. I should ask that question too. Yes. <laughs> Have you thought about filming exploration videos of going around the nearby villages to source building materials or waste materials that can be used or repurposed by Project Camp? Yeah, I thought about it. Uh, looks super cool as well, many settings, but we need people helping with video. Um, but yeah, many more interesting places to film. Question from Jonathan Lohmann. How will you be staying warm in the winter? Lots of blankets and some fireplace and I don't know some cardio exercises hot chocolate hot chocolate could you give us some global updates about how you plan on interlinking the three projects precious plastic fixing fashion and project camp I'd say at the moment they're quite uh, developing individually uh, one army is the umbrella foundation that binds them together but I think it's in the small details that we can have overlap, that we use some precious plastic, for instance, here. Our people in uh, precious plastic use fixing fashion. Uh, so I think in general, it's a lot about developing the individual projects. And at the later stage, they really going to join more each other's forces. Hi, are you going to do a video on where you got your solar equipment and what it costs you? Mm, we already have two videos on how we built the electronics and how we set up the panels. Uh, I think in general in the academy we would have a more thorough section where we really explain about solar. But that would be more later on. From Harry Kut, how and when will you define success? Uh, if you don't really have a specific goal, how do you find working and motivation for a non-exact quest? Question? Uh, I don't really know, to be honest. Uh, I think it would more get more clear over time as we develop and as our goal becomes a bit more uh, clear. For now, I would say it's just a lot of intuition and joy that keeps us going forward. And I guess at some point it would be become a bit more of a clear mission. Yeah. And the su success probably also comes with motivation and vice versa. Do so. you plan to get some goats or sheep to mow your huge meadows? No, not right now. Goats are very wild. It's our most requested YouTube comment that we should get goats. What is needed to join your project? I would say it depends. Everyone can join, but you need to have a task that fits you. So if you go to support.projectcamp.com, you can see which task fits you. And if you have the skills for it, and then you could come. That said, I would say season one is closing, so not many open tasks. It would more start again in season two. So keep an eye on it. What are your plans for winter? Are you going to drive the van under a roof somewhere or make some kind of furnace to get warm? Uh, yeah, as they've said before, uh, there will be a point that we will take a break and we will drive a bit off the land. But otherwise we will also be around and just take it a bit uh, with the winter mode, so slower and just drink lots of hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Hot chocolate. Question from Scott Butler. Would love to support you via Patreon. Do you belong? We belong. We belong. We belong. <laughs> what are you, uh, Joe T, what are your thoughts on veganism? And are many of you vegan yourselves? Talking about living sustainable and responsible lifestyle at Project Camp, this would be an easy place to begin. Good luck. Yeah, I would say it's a rather complex question to answer. Uh, Dave and I are vegetarian. We get tons of eggs from our dear neighbors. <laughs> so I would say definitely not vegan so far. Uh, but yeah, it's not very linear. Uh, when we were here with big groups, we decided to go fully vegan on the kitchen. But that's how far as I can go with the answer. Yeah, sometimes it's just uh, it's hard to see what is more sustainable to get weird exotic food from the other side of the world that is vegan or get more close by things that are non-vegan i think we don't have the answer yet so still exploring so if you have suggestions let us know yeah. jeremy and tunish can you please use another music for your videos yes jeremy i've seen your comment before 
I actually already changed music from free music on YouTube to signing up for Soundstripe. I guess I'm just not good in selecting the right music. So if you have a library or something, bring it. So this was it for this video. I hope now you have some of your questions answered. Probably new questions popped up now. Uh, next video you will see this structure a bit more finished. So we hope next year we can have a helping force very joyfully making the videos and helping out. Dave really needs a support in there. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.